This video is going to be a long overdue film study of Iman Ross St. Brown. Simply put, he's he's a complete football player. Um, after watching probably over 120 plays uh, from four games that you'll see film of and three other games that I have on my online database, he just impresses you in everything he does. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Route running, catching the ball. I'm going to refer to this a couple of times probably. 106 catches in 2022 on 146 targets, 72.6% uh, catch rate, um, if I wrote down the correct data. I don't recall too many receivers that I've seen that type of catch rate from where the catches have, the receptions have been varied. They've been diverse. Bubbles, screens at or behind the line of scrimmage, slants, shake routes, in, out routes. China in, China out, whip routes, if whatever people want to call them, over concepts, inside release, go, uh, that sometimes turns into a fade, fade out into the end zone, which you'll see one of those here, 72% catch rate. I'll refer to that probably a couple of times. He's just impressive. You can tell, I'm sure, by just the sound of my voice and, the, and, and what I'm saying so far, but yards after the catch on certain concepts, you'll see evidence of it in the video here. He's a good blocker, a, v a very willing blocker. That was surprising to me. I had seen some evidence of it about a month ago when I did a video on uh, one of Ben Johnson's favorite formations that he utilizes. <clears throat> and I think Ben Johnson and the offensive staff expect a lot of Iman Ross St. Brown uh, because they trust him in big moments on third down, and they trust him as a blocker. And then they put him in the backfield zone, which is just shocking. I saw some personnel groups where he's in the backfield, and then they're throwing the ball to him out of the backfield. I saw some personnel groups where there's a typical running back in the backfield, and I'm in Ross St. Brown is running a jet or a fast fast sweep or, or catching the ball on motion out of the backfield. That part of his game stood out to me after studying a lot of the film from 2022. I'm going to let some plays run here. Uh, I will talk about uh, some of the plays that you see and try to do some actual film study and not just commentary. You'll see I'm in Ross St. Brown um, spot shadowed hopefully before every play. I'm going to focus on four games from last year and what St. Brown was able to do uh, against the Eagles in Week 1, against Washington in Week 2, Bears in Week 10, and then the Jaguars blowout in Detroit late in the season where Detroit really showed everybody what was up and what they were going to deal with if you had to beat that Lions team late in the season. Uh, some overarching things that I think I've noticed besides the ones I'm or I've already mentioned. Reliable and tough on third downs incredibly tough on third downs. Goff trusts him, and, and he should. I'm in Ross St. Brown gets open on you know man concepts, zone concepts, makes tough catches, as you can see here, fights his way into the end zone. I mean, the 72% catch percentage isn't all on screens and bubbles. It isn't all on whip routes because he makes tough catches. He's really great on change of direction stuff, if you ask me, routes where he changes direction. And he can manipulate the defender based on a man or zone. You see one of the only drops, actually the only drop that I had in 120 plays that I saved, about 50 of which I used for this video. He's just exceptional on change of direction stuff. Blocking, as I mentioned before, at six foot, 197 pounds is better than many would presume. Um, I really don't like rating players, to be honest with you, but I'm going to do it here. I'm, I'm comfortable generally providing a range for players or for a player. At this point, for me, based on the film that I've saw and, and what knowledge I have, if someone doesn't recognize that I'm in Ross St. Brown is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, I just I just don't know what they're watching. Uh, best wide receiver, best slot receiver, best receiver, six foot or under. I don't know. I really don't care. Uh, he's effective at everything they ask him to do. Super dangerous, makes tough catches, as you're seeing with the film. This is all, the film is going to be organized by week. So we saw the Eagles plays uh, scroll through early. Where he had the, the great catch for a touchdown on third down against the Eagles. A blown coverage by the Eagles for a 29-yard reception. Uh, you saw the touchdown catch here against Washington in week two. Then they use him on this jet sweep, 58-yard run at a twin slot. You'll get the end zone angle here in a moment. You can see that. One of the things that Ben Johnson does a lot of, not just with Iman Ross St. Brown, is attack to the boundary. And you've got a, a safety you know, to the boundary lined up in a high alignment, a wide five-technique D end, 
and then uh, inside linebacker slash perhaps strong safety walked up into the box, lined up over the right tackle, and they're just out leveraging Washington, and they're cracking on the man defender. So they're getting man, and the number one receiver to the boundary is cracking down on him. It's essentially a two-for-one because the corner assigned to guard that receiver went with him as well because it's man. Leaves all this space for Iman Ross St. Brown. Sure, there'll be people who say, well, he should have scored. He should have taken it to the house. No, he's not He's not a 4-3 speed guy. He's fast enough to get the job done and have 106 catches in the NFL in his second year after having 90 in his first year. Third down completion here on a third and three for 49 yards, balloon coverage by Washington. Uh, the very next one, incomplete pass in the end zone on a third down. One thing I noticed is he made a lot of plays that turned – drives that could have been field goals into touchdowns. Now, in this case here, you, you know, you see the touchdown, the great catch out of Bunch, where he's essentially, you know, soloed up man. Goff has got heavy pressure from directly in his face and behind him. He gets sandwiched, I think. It's a great throw off, and Iman Ross St. Brown is able to maintain his balance and elevate for the football, unlike the defender. A um, couple of examples later on that you'll see what I mean, where he's turned – Potential field goal drives into touchdowns. Um, I love watching film of him. I enjoyed it. I wanted to show what he's capable of, and I tried to show you know what is generally considered, I guess, highlights. But I showed us. I'm showing a series of plays on third down. Now this one was, and it was a first and ten on the tenth possession, late in the game. Uh, ben Johnson, you know, out formation, out leveraged Washington's defense. Really, just out coached their defensive coordinator. At that point, I think I saved, like I said, over 50 plays for this video. You're not getting all of them. You're getting, you know, a, a large majority of them. There was a period of time during the season where he was injured. I think it was week three, four, five. I could be wrong. This is week 10 against the Bears. I wanted to skip ahead. A, a brutally efficient play on third and five here. It goes down as a reception for him. Just a shovel pass out of empty. But it's basically a trap concept by Detroit. They love, Ben Johnson loves these trap concepts. I did a video that I'll try to link up in the top right uh, on trap wham concepts. Just basically block, uh, leaving a D-tackle unblocked, kicking him out with the opposite side guard. I'm in Ross St. Brown. Simple catch, simple concept, down scheme by all the other offensive linemen. You get another third and nine here, 13-yard catch at a bunch. China in, whip route, whatever you want to call it, change of direction, pushing the defender to the outside, to the sideline, and then bringing the, bringing the route back into the middle of the field, you know, to the seam hook area. Lined up in a joker set, so in the backfield with a typical running back, and then just going to run a swing pass out into the flats on a first and 10 for 12 yards. He's dangerous. They use him in a multitude of ways. This was the first possession, I believe, against the, the Bears. 15 plays, 68 yards for a field goal. Uh, second possession here, this is a touchdown, a 16-play, 84-yard drive. You've got a second and 13, and you saw he's in the backfield again. He's in the backfield at running back by himself this time, though. Swing route out into the flats. Boom, easy, stealing money. He can be used as an outside receiver, a number one receiver. He can be used in the slot. He can be used in motion. You've seen them have him in the backfield for the previous two plays. Here he is lined up outside with a tight end, I believe, over concept on a second and 10. Same drive, 22-yard catch against man coverage. You see the separation that's there. Yeah, he's not a 4-3, uh, maybe not even a 4-4. Four, four. I, I don't care. He plays like a 4-4-5 four, four, and makes plays, makes tough catches, holds on to the ball despite contact here. Uh, a hit by the safety late, not a late hit, hit after after the ball is in his hands. He holds onto the ball. You, you'll get the end zone angle over here. Same drive, that second drive, that second possession. You had a 14 yard catch out of the backfield, 22 yard catch, which I showed you on the over concept against man. This is against zone. It's a 20 yard catch. He's a huge part of what the Lions do. I don't think he receives the credit that he's due. Uh, if he drops another 100 plus catch on the NFL next year, uh, I don't know what people are seeing if they don't include him in the discussion of, of being one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Little reception um, on a second down. Uh, this is now later in the game. I think this is the go-ahead drive, basically game-winning drive. First and 10 at the 14. And look at how they attack. So similar to the Jet concept against Washington. They It's a fast sweep now. We, we call it a fast sweep if the running back, receiver, whatever – 
goes in front of the quarterback and, and essentially it goes down as a pass completion because it was a forward pass, as opposed to the jet sweep where he goes behind the quarterback. Great play, 13 yards, gets him down to the one-yard line. I think um, Jamal Williams scored on the very next play to give the Lions the lead, which they would hold on to. I think 31-30 was that week. 106 catches, 146 targets. I'm showing you some that are simple, easy, quick, like this one. I'll show you some bubbles later on, but you've certainly seen enough of them already downfield. The tough catch in the end zone against Washington, a disputed catch down to the one-yard line against the Eagles where some people thought it was incomplete. This is one of my favorite football players to do a video of. Hopefully my commentary in the film that I'm showing is, is doing him justice because I think he is – the best player on their team offensively, uh, position player. Uh, and, and I think he's a guy who, no matter who he played for, is going to have 90-plus catches. This is not a, quote, system player. There used to be guys like that, small, quick receivers and run-and-shoot offenses in the early 90s, even up to the mid-late 90s, guys who caught a, a crap ton of bubbles, screens, you know, got to 90 catches, but it's because they threw the ball 65 times and um, they caught the ball, you know, on routes shorter than five yards, you know, two-thirds of the time. I'm in Ross St. Brown is everywhere. He shows up everywhere. They talk about a depth of target for quarterbacks. I would be interested to see the depth of target for I'm in Ross St. Brown. I think it will be a very diverse uh, chart, hit chart, I guess is what I should say. As you see the plays flow through again against Chicago. I'm trying to let the plays flow through by team. Uh, twice through each. Feel free to comment on the individual plays. I'm not breaking them down, you know, maybe as much as I should. I, I just think that everything Iman Ross St. Brown does is done the right way. I love his change, not just change of direction, but change of speed on those whip routes or China in, China out routes. You're going to see a fade out in a moment where I think he varies his speed intentionally to kind of let the defender relax slightly. Uh, it's going to be in the the game against the Jags. But before we get to that, some examples of him blocking. And and he does a great job, if you ask me, of blocking at the point of attack. He does a great job staying on his man. You just see a little crack scheme here, cracking down on a safety for the Bears on a touchdown run by DeAndre Swift. I'm not sure if I give you the end zone angle of this one or not, but I'm showing this because he's a complete football player, which I think is the first thing that I said. And it wasn't s totally surprising to me because some Lions fans had you know, told me that he was, and they were certainly correct. Everything he does is, is fundamentally sound, and everything he does, whether he's getting the football or not, is done um, to help the team win. Same play, end zone angle. It's the pin down scheme. Bears are playing man, so they get another two for one. Here's Iman Ross St. Brown blocking a safety who's responsible for someone else. Pin, crack, whatever you want to call it. And then here's the defender who's man on Iman Ross St. Brown, who's now put himself out of position. You dare not play man into the boundary against the Lions because Ben Johnson will find a way to exploit it, if you ask me. Third and final example, I think, of him blocking, or maybe the second, I should say. Down here is a number one receiver. Going to be another run um, inside the red zone by, I think, Swift. He just stays on people. There is, there's no lack of effort. And, and I've seen lack of effort in receivers when they're blocking, when they're not getting the football. I'm in Ross St. Brown is not that guy. And I don't know that you can be that guy in uh, Ben Johnson's offense, at least with the Lions. You guys let me know if, if you're a Lions fan and you've still listened this long. First of all, thank you for listening. You know, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you enjoy the content, the Lions content that I'm trying to put out, please consider subscribing to the channel now. And let me know if that's an accurate statement that, that, Ben Johnson's expectation level is high for everyone to be able to block. All right, moving on to film against the Jags. First possession, a touchdown drive. This is going to be a 12-yard completion down into the one-yard line. Disputed catch, heavy contact. Heavy contact at the three, I think, by the safety. Another change of direction. Doesn't really lose the defender. The defender kind of grabbed his hip. Uh, plays will cycle through again, so you can see it. Blocks to finish off the drive on the very next play. Touchdown drive on the first possession by Detroit. Uh, second possession is a 10-yard touchdown reception on what I would call a fade out. I can't. I don't have a whole ton of room to draw, but you know it's going to end up looking like it could be a fade to the to the sideline. Excuse me, to the pylon, and then he brings it back here again. I don't have all the room to draw, so forgive me for the ugly lines I just drew there. But you're welcome to you know watch the route as it develops, watch the catch him sneak into the end zone. I'll show you one more time. 
we call it a fade out. You know, you can call it whatever you wish against press man coverage, making it look like it's going to be a fade and then bringing it back to the pylon, the short pylon. Cool route for guys who don't just blow past past people. Fifth possession, the little trips left bubble concept. Uh, Short, quick. He's very abrupt when he catches screens. Uh, Committed. And you can only be committed if you know your guys are going to block for you on a certain lane. It seems like these screens, these bubbles are well-practiced by the Lions as he loses a defender on like what I would call a shakeout on a third down. I think it was a third and seven. And the last one, a a four-yard touchdown out of bunch, a design play where essentially you're getting a pick-rub concept. Again, you play man against Ben Johnson into the boundary at your own peril, and I certainly would not advocate for playing man against the Lions um, out of a bunch set or bunch side to the formation. Look, the week before this game against the Jags, I think was the um, Bills Thanksgiving game where I think he had nine catches on 10 targets for 122 yards and a touchdown. To me, he had an impact in nearly every game. Um, he exceeded 100%, 100 catches with a 70% plus catch rate. I think that's extremely impressive. And he did all that despite not playing in week four, only playing 21 snaps in week five, and then 10 snaps, I think, against Dallas in week seven. So I, so I think it was pretty obvious he was injured. I don't know the nature of the injury, so feel free to educate me in the comment section. It seems quite obvious that he was dealing with something because nobody stopped him impact-wise, stats-wise. All year in 2022. I mean, hell, nobody really stopped him the year before as a rookie. This guy's going to get a huge contract in Detroit. It might be in the Lions' best interest to look at signing this guy now and 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 not letting him have another 110, 115, you know, catch season with six or eight or ten touchdowns and just drive the price up. As a Lions fan, you know, maybe you don't want your team to allocate a certain number of resources to just one player, but in my opinion, I'm in Ross St. Brown is one of those guys. Fantastic football player. Nobody stopped him last year, in my opinion, uh, based on the film that I saw. And if you're a member of my Patreon or, um, you know, there's not too many Lions fans in there at this point. But if you're a member of my Patreon, you get access to an online database where I have the film cut up and you can go watch plays. I think I've got six complete offensive games for the Lions separate from these four that I just showed you which was, you know, again, against the Eagles, Washington, Bears, and Jags. I have six other games that I didn't necessarily use for this film study. Um, I love how they use him. Better blocker than you would presume. Used him out of the backfield. Jet and fast sweeps. I I can't name you 10 better football players in the NFL than this guy in terms of what he's asked to do, the depth of what he's asked to do, the width of what he's asked to do, where he attacks on the field with his routes, his blocking, his commitment to his angles on his routes, his commitment on screens and bubbles that I mentioned. Don't know a lot about the guy. Don't really know his background. Just know that the film I watch looks like a dangerous football player and someone that NFL defenses should be and I'm sure are worried about each and every week that they go up against the lines. You guys let me know if you enjoyed this video. If, um, if I'm accurate with the things I'm saying about him in terms of him being a blocker, being used out of the backfield, the the way that Ben Johnson abuses uh, man coverage, particularly to the boundary, the way he uses the fast or jet sweeps to manipulate man coverage. I, I don't know what the overriding coverage is that teams play against the Lions, but based on the film I watched of I'm in Ross St. Brown, uh, it doesn't look like man is an extremely effective coverage against them. Or let me rephrase that. It looks like a lot of big plays happen against teams who play man. I guess I'm comfortable phrasing it that way. Maybe there's situations or examples that man coverage um, is beneficial to the defense, but I didn't see a lot of them, and I didn't see a lot of them against Iman Ross St. Brown. He's not a guy who I have seen get locked up by someone multiple times. I had one drop in the 50, 52 plays that I used for this film study before I cut, you know, a handful of them out, 10 or 12 out uh, for purposes of trying to be quick. Uh, These videos, I like to be at 15, 18 minutes. We're up to 20 now, man. Thank you guys for listening and checking out the video. If you enjoyed the content, please let me know. If you think I can improve on it in some manner, I would I would appreciate hearing that as well. If you think other Lions fans would, would enjoy this content, enjoy this film study commentary, please consider grabbing a link. Uh, and sharing this video out on social media somewhere to help the video get more reach.